So I'm going to go ahead and do a problem where we're going to look at um, both a confined and an unconfined aquifer. And I'm going to step you through the process so you can see how the boundary conditions are used, how steady state conditions can be used, and things like that. So let's do first an example of a confined aquifer. Okay, so So we have some confining layer here. Okay, the thickness of this layer is given as B. There's some measurements that are provided. So we're provided um, that we have uh, upstream piezometric head as H2 and piezometric head and head within the confining layer as H1. Um, so this would be Actually, you know what, I'm sorry. I, uh, I switched those. This is actually supposed to be two and this is supposed to be one. So the piez upstream is going to be, sorry. You essentially have something that looks like this. This is one and this is two. This is my surface. Okay, and this is my water table. So it kind of changes um, laterally. Okay, so the distance observations, we have observations. Um, H1 is at location zero and H2 is at uh, location L. So the distance between these two are just L. Given that we have a homogeneous isotropic uh, subsurface and we're given um, that we have steady state conditions. Okay, so that's the that's the problem statement. We're just essentially trying to derive the the governing or derive the equation for this um, for this uh, confined aquifer. Now, all we have to do is state our boundary conditions. What are our boundary conditions? At um, x equal to um, zero, our head right is equal to h one. And at x equal to L, then our head is equal to H2. Okay, so we end up with these are, these are our boundary conditions. So we start with our confined aquifer equation. So for a confined mm. aquifer, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'll, I'll put in the 2D and I'm going to start crossing off because clearly we don't have any flow in the y direction. We're just looking at flow in the x direction. So this would be our x and this would be our y. So we just want our x direction in a flow. So this was is going to just be um, s d h d t is d d x t d h d x plus d dy, ty, dh, dy plus r. Do we have recharge? Um, we don't have any other, so we have this head, this is our observation, so, but we, we don't have an actual recharge parameter. Oh, okay. This is steady state, this is a steady state condition. Mm. So we actually don't have, um, we don't have recharge. Okay. Um, we don't also have 
flow in the y direction we just have flow in the x and since we have steady state conditions that means that our dh dt goes to zero does that make sense so we end up with um uh zero is equal to now this is going to be d squared h uh d squared so dx squared sorry um and this is going to be one over t okay now if i multiply both sides by t what is that going to give me it's going to get rid of my t right and we end up with zero is squared h dx squared okay so now we start to do our integrations um, and let's move this to the other side um, where we have zero dx squared is d squared h okay what is going to be my integration on the left hand side say so what's the derivative of a constant zero right so would zero. Do, we just put c then yes exactly so the integral of zero is going to just be some constant so let's call this c1 and we're left with dx mm. and this is going to be dh we will also have a constant on the left hand side i'm just uh um i'm on the right hand side i'm just gonna we're gonna see that on the next step so if i take another integral on both sides what is my left hand side going to be now this is going to be c1x plus my new constant right is going to be h so this is going to be my my, gov my governing equation for my piezometric head but we need to use our bcs our boundary conditions uh to solve for c1 and c2 so then we go back up here right into this section yeah and we plug in our x we plug in our little h and let me make it smaller so you can see it so for x equals zero and h equal to h1 we get zero so c1 multiplied by zero plus c2 is h1 do you see that mm -hmm. so then c2 is just h1 now for x equal l our h is h2 so c1 at l plus and i'm just going to plug in c2 here h1 is h2 so then c1 is going to be h2 minus h1 over l okay oops we plug that into back into our equation up top and we get uh, h is equal to c1 which is h2 minus h1 over l multiplied by x plus h1 so this is your solution for a um a confined layer mm -hmm. so this is confined this is uh isotropic this is homogeneous this is no recharge and steady state okay now if you had a recharge term okay go back up here that would actually be included um on the left hand side of the equation so you would have just an extra rx or rx squared something like that on the left hand side of the equation i want to uh, get to this other uh, problem where we would also look at an unconfined aquifer. Okay, so we have a, again, here's our confining layer, which could be like our bedrock. And then we have the ground. Okay, we have maybe like a, a, a sloping, 
um, piezometric head. So here, this is the, and here, this is going to be H2. Um, and we're characterized, so we have homogeneous soil. Um, we have uh, steady state conditions. Okay, we have, um, what else, what else, what else? We have a flow in the X direction. And let's, we could have, I mean, I don't have the solution for recharge, but I kind of feel like we can do it. You guys think we can do it together? Yeah. So let's say we have turned on some recharge. So we have uh, uh, recharge into the aquifer, the unconfined aquifer. All right, let's do this together. So we set up our governing equation. The governing equation is in two dimensions, but we're only going to look at it from one dimension. So SY 2H naught DH squared DT is going to be d dx kx one half d squared dh squared dx plus d dy ky one half dh squared dy plus recharge. So we're assuming steady state. We are assuming only movement in the x direction. So that's going to leave us with zero is one half kx, and this is going to be um, d squared h squared dx squared plus r, okay? And this is going to be our ordinary differential equation, okay? Okay, hopefully I don't regret this. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find our head profile. Um, okay, and let's go ahead and multiply everything by two. So that's gonna give us zero is kx, I'm sorry, um, it said homogeneous, so we can get rid of that. Uh, X subscript. Um, and let's also multiply by, or sorry, divide by K. I just want to isolate the constants into all together. So I'm going to get rid of that also from here. Um, so then that's going to give us, oops. So then that's going to give us um, D squared H squared DX squared plus 2R over K. So we're going to say D squared H squared over DX squared is negative 2R over K. We're going to multiply both sides by our DX squared, DX squared, and we get D squared H squared is negative 2r over k dx squared. So then now I'm going to integrate both sides. And so we're going to get an integration, integration. And this is going to be um, dh squared, which is then going to be um, negative 2r over k x, right, uh, plus c one, yes? And this is still going to be all multiplied by our dx. Okay. Um, now do it again, where we get 
our h squared is now going to be negative 2r over k x squared over 2 plus um, c1x plus c2. Yeah. So then this two is going to go away. And um, now we need to plug in our boundary conditions, which I totally forgot to make a table about that up here. So let's do that now. Um, if this is going to be, this was given this length here. Um, so the boundary conditions turn into um, at x equal to zero, our h is equal to h1, and at x equal to l, our h is equal to h2. So then let's use that at x equals zero. We end up with h1 squared is equal to negative 2r over k and this is going to be 0 squared plus C1, 0 plus C2. Making sure I got everything. That, look, that's what, that looks right. So then this is going to go away, and that's going to go away. And you end up with um, C2 is equal to H1 squared. And at x equal to L, we plug that into here um, where we get h2 squared is negative r oops, over k multiplied by l quantity squared plus c1 multiplied by l plus c2 which is h1 squared okay so then we manipulate this to solve for our constant so then we end up with h2 squared minus h1 squared plus r over k l squared all divided by l is c1. That's not so bad. So that's going to be h2 squared minus h1 squared over l plus r over k is c1. So let me plug yeah, that um... back in. Did it's I make a mistake? R, R K L, right? R K. Thank you, thank you. Yes, it is R K L. The only reason why I did I wanted to point that part out, this parameter, just goes away if you have no recharge. Yeah. So C one right. would be H mm, H two squared minus H one over L. Yeah, that's all mm -hmm. I wanted to show to show. And now I'm gonna plug this back into my equation. So then it's gonna be H. 2 is um, negative r over k x squared plus c1. Oh, this is going to look nasty. Let me make this smaller. Why did I do this one? h squared minus r over k h squared plus c1 which is h2 squared minus h1 squared over L plus R over K L multiplied by X plus C2, which is h1 squared. That's the, that is the equation for, well, actually, you can simplify it, right? It's going to be h of X is the square root of all of that. Forgive me for not rewriting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, integrations, fun. Um, the problems really don't get too, too difficult. Um, it's basically just applying this principle over and over again and using the boundary conditions. Um, sometimes you're going to have steady state conditions. Actually, most of the time you're going to have steady state conditions. Um, and sometimes you're going to have a 2D, sometimes you'll have 1D, 